Well, the Halo Infinite Bash Honor update just went last. What's the first thing you see when you click into the game? Oh, yes, of course. Pay money into the battle pass that's coming with this. Uh, I think we're going to pass, but let's view the track record and see what's possible. So what's coming with this update is a whole new system when it comes to how you earn things within the operation pass here. They love they basically took out all the filler and replaced it with Spartan points, which we'll cover later in this video. But basically, it looks like you have this coding right here for 500 credits. This also makes it so that this pass becomes permanent, right? It doesn't expire over time. Of course, you can always go back and pay into it to then unlock all the items. But basically, you're going to be getting a lot of Spartan points and armor sets as well when it comes to this entire pass, which I think is the right way to go about doing it. At least, you know, the, the Spartan credits, the Spartan points are used for customization later in the video, which I'll showcase what you can actually use them for. But basically, people just kind of care about armor sets, and that's what you're beginning. You begin a whole new armor set, as you typically do when it comes to these operations, and you get some Spartan points to utilize the, them however you feel like. And again, to earn these Spartan points, you need to complete your one game per day, earns you 250 Spartan points. If you complete all the challenges with the weekly ultimate, you do get 1,000 Spartan points, which seems like a good amount, but when you actually think about it and actually calculate it out, it's not that much, which we'll cover later in this video. But what can you play with this new Banished Honor update? Well, it's the, the same stuff you had last week, right? And they didn't really change anything. Again, we still have Corrosion 24-7, which is the new map for social game modes that recently was added in. And also within the ranked arena playlist, uh, at your game list right here, you can see that there is the new map of Interference, which is the remake of The Rig from Halo 5, which actually plays that well. I'm having fun with that map. Uh, keep in mind that your ranks did reset with this update, so you have to play your, your five placement matches again. So for things for you to directly do within the game to play some new content, well, it's the same as it was last week, effectively, but you do have some new additions when it comes to new operation pass, some store items, which we're going to cover all of this, and also a significant change to the sandbox for a lot of weapons, which we're covering in this video as well. So if you guys enjoyed these type of videos, make sure to like and subscribe is always appreciated because apparently 64% of you guys who watch this channel are not subscribed. So if you guys want to stay up to date with gaming, appreciate you guys clicking subscribe and like. So let's get right back into those details. Here are the changes 343 made to the sandbox. A lot of key nerfs and buffs to a lot of the weapons and gear within Halo Infinite. So let's go down the list again. We kind of repeated a lot of this back in the initial announcement of this update, but I'll give you the actual stats that they actually showcase here about how much things were nerfed, how much things were actually buffed. So let's go first into the plasma pistol. There's nothing really changing here besides they restored the EMP functionality on vehicles. So that classic ish experience because it really isn't that classic of a feature but it's been around for the most part of a better decade and so yeah better just bring that back kind of thing they also nerfed the sidekick where now it shoots one round less per second so it's going to be a little bit slower on the time to kill there though from what i've seen when it comes to the reticle resetting that actually doesn't expand as fast as the fire rate is slower so We'll see how it plays out with this new update right now. Uh, the sniper also has a slightly faster ready up time from 1 to 1.2 seconds. So it's a little bit shorter. Uh, nothing too crazy there, but more of a competitive edge kind of thing. Uh, they also mentioned with a cinder shot, they had some significant changes where they removed the inverted impulse effect as in that gravity effect that kind of just pulls you into the center of the shot, which I think is kind of a cool, unique aspect of it. But again, when it comes to shooters that like whenever a player loses their character control, it can cause some issues and some frustration. So they removed that, which I think is kind of a more of a nerf and husky rate than anything else. Uh, they also mentioned that the rounds per second has decreased from 1.33 to 1.1 per second. So a little bit slower firing, a little losing the gravity effect as well. So I think there's more of a nerf and husky raid than anything else. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, now, a big thing that's been dealing with the sandbox of Halo Infinite is the gravity hammer. And that significantly was changed with this update as well. Saying that we felt the range in the gravity hammer can fully eliminate an enemy was way too far. So we wanted to address this in slightest ways. So slightly decrease the elimination range. The low radius is fr went from 1.25 to 1.75. And the 
radius high went from 2 to 2.25. We made some changes to the spike grenade as well to kind of keep it more in line with what you have with regular grenades within Halo. So then the detonation timer starts changed from immediately to when at rest, meaning the grenade timer when it actually explodes won't actually start until it lands onto a surface then the timer starts very similar to like a sticky grenade very similar to like the frag grenades in this game as well so just kind of keep it more in line with that and also that the timer has now uh, decreased from 1.8 seconds to 1.2 seconds big change for firefight when it comes to scoring where now you actually get points for having assists within the game which is kind of an important thing to do especially for all you drivers out there who have to drive the warhog and maybe the only one who really knows how to use it you'll finally get driver assist and they actually broke down how the points work out with this so a regular assist counts as five points and a driver assist counts as 10 points. Now a surprise change that came with this update that 343 did not mention at all and that is aim magnetism toggle. So what is this? So basically it gives you the option to turn aim assist on or off. A lot of mouse and keyboard players have been asking for this as they prefer a raw input, but personally I like aim assist on mouse, while playing on mouse and keyboard, keeps you competitive I feel, but it's at least an option for you right here. You can see it's under the mouse and keyboard option right here for aim magnetism. Now 343 did state that there is still gonna be some magnetism even if you toggle this off, saying aim magnetism for equipment like grapple shot and the threat sensor will not be disabled with this toggle. And if you do disable this aim and magnetism, your red radical range will still turn red on your screen to let you know that your bullet magnetism has still there, but this your, your whole of your character's aim assist will be gone. We also got some information about ranked Halo Infinite, not your overall rank, that's not, nothing's changing there, don't worry, but I'm talking about like your ranks when it comes to the ranked Halo Slayer, ranks, capture flag, all that stuff. Your ranks are going to be reset with this update. So you have to redo your five placement matches to be able to sweat on those games. And keep in mind that they also are adding in an auto end feature when it comes to a game. Basically that if your game loads into a match, that's like a 3v4 or 2v4, people crash out, lag out, something like that. The match will just end because the game recognizes that's not a fair game. So the game will just quit itself. And don't worry, you'll have no concerns about losing CSR, gaining CSR. It's just gonna be a null match. It's just not even gonna do anything. Respawn cameras are changing with this update. Now basically returning that classic feature of being able to rotate your camera around when you die to kind of keep track of dudes different callouts. That's coming back in the game now, which is a fantastic change right there. Weapon drills are getting an update where they're adding in the Bandit Evo rifle. I mean, this is good if you want to warm up, but generally I just kind of load into a match with bots and just set them up to Spartan rank when it comes to strafing to kind of help my aim a little bit before jumping into playing some sweaty rank modes. They didn't mention this previously, but only with this update that in Deadlock, that BTB map, that they didn't really like having the Scorpion and Wraiths in there. They felt like the Scorpion was a little too overpowered. So then they cut out the Scorpion from a pelican drop and now it just be wraiths which i think is a little better for that map the btb heavies refresh is coming in basically bringing in a lot of the btb maps already in the game but now for btb heavies which yeah great change and that one flag ctf has been added to heavies forge is getting a major update again we touched on this previously the two big things that you're getting the alien planet biomes as well as a flood biome for you to play around with to your heart's content you can scale it up all you want there are a bunch of various little changes coming in with Forge as well. I'm not much of a Forger myself. This is going to be very important for people out there who like the Forge. And this is directly affecting people who don't Forge. Again, I'm going all around in circles on this. But basically it's saying that this is very important because people who make Forge content have their stuff get put into matchmaking. So I would be shocked if we don't see this right here getting added into the infection playlist for matchmaking in some capacity. Now, probably the biggest addition with this recent Halo Infinite update is the exchange. If you're wondering where that is or what it is, you go into the shop right here, you click on exchange, and these are the various items that you can unlock. It will show you that it's owned if you already own that item. And again, like I've grinded Halo Infinite a pretty good amount through a lot of the content that's in here I've already unlocked. But basically you earn Spartan points very similar to the Master Chief Collection by just playing the game, completing challenges, which we've talked about previously on the channel. And you're able to use those points as unlocks, which this is a great way to kind of give players just like a, that carrot at the end of the stick to kind of keep grinding, to keep playing the game. But what we brought up in a previous video that some of the 
point valuations are a little unfair. Now, majority of this content is going to be stuff that's been tied to either events or promotions that now you can just unlock by playing the game, which sounds fantastic. We do have this new coding called the Xanadu Falu, and this is a brand new coding that's never been in the game before, and it's worth 30,000 Spartan points. But how much do you need to grind to earn 30,000 Spartan points? Turns out, a lot. So we've worked out the math here, and if you play every single day, you do earn one set of 250 Spartan points for just playing one game per day. Sounds pretty great, right? Well, there are also some issues with that as well. Again, with like the ultimate weekly challenges, we've talked about this previously. If you complete all the weekly challenges, you do earn 1000 Spartan points on top of that. And there are going to be Spartan points tied to the event pass here as well. You can earn a grand total of 15,000 Spartan points. So let's add that all together. So if we do 250 Spartan points times seven equals 1,750 times that by four. So we'll do like a month, right? You can, so you can maximize your grind skill time right here, right? So 7,000 Spartan points is your max for just daily rewards to earn. And like I said, you earn 1,000 Spartan points for the weekly ultimate. So for a month, your max of Spartan points you can earn for a month from weekly ultimates is 4,000. And like I stated earlier, you can earn 15,000 by just grinding through the operation pass, which you should be able to do within a month if you're trying to grind super hard. So that's 15 thousand spartan points so grand total in a month you can earn twenty six thousand spartan points if you played every single day and complete every single weekly ultimate challenge and completed the event pass meaning that this new coding right here you can't unlock within a month if you played every single day and three for three say that the exchange is supposed to refresh every four to six weeks with a new operation so this operation needs to last at least five to six weeks for you to be able to unlock this one coding and it definitely is going to be the only thing you're going to be able to unlock within the exchange. 343 also just revealed when the next operations are coming. We have Tenrai 4 coming in on June 4th through July 2nd and then we have Spartan Surplus from July 2nd to July 30th. So you will have enough time to grind for this singular coding if you play every single day and complete every single challenge. To me, that seems a bit steep of a grind right there, especially for a singular coding. So 343 responded to me about this on Twitter. So I brought up exactly what I mentioned to you guys in this video on Twitter when this news was first dropped about the Spartan points and the exchange and the community manager, Unishek replied to me saying, hey Kevin, when the Banish Honor launches, next week, which is now today, we'll be closely monitoring the earn rates of Spartan points and how folks use them in the exchange as everyone has the opportunity to go hands on. We'll have more tangible data and player feedback to evaluate. Please give it a go next week and let us know what you think. Which of course, I appreciate the response there letting you know that the community is being heard, but I do feel like the grind for Spartan points and the prices for what we're getting offered it's just a little steep. But like I stated earlier, I have a lot of these items already unlocked from just playing through every event, grinding through every event pass and things like that. So it's gonna be one of those things that maybe at first it'll be a bit rough when it comes to earning your unlocks, but since these are tied to events and promotions, right? Most likely there's gonna be a lot of reused items within the exchange. So maybe with that Spartan surplus that's coming in uh, in July, we could see Xanadu Falu come back we could see this uh, anniversary platinum coding come back or something like that to really come back in the exchange. So that could be a way to maybe at first the earn rates and sparring points are just not quite there. But over time, after like one or two refreshes, you might be able to unlock the thing that you want. But do you want to wait months to be able to unlock a coding? I don't know. I'm not that patient. And you know, since it's a Halo update day, we have a new shop update. And we've seen a lot of these updates basically being shop updates rather than content updates. So what's coming around with this shop update coming around, guys? Well, it's kind of actually a little minimalized this time around. We see a lot of reused assets right here. It's so really the only bundle that I see is the Path of Dominance, which is worth 32 100 credits 3200 which roughly equates to 32 dollars usd which to me is a little steep but again let's take a look to see what they have to offer and i know i've been seeing this in the comments section of my videos all the time i've stated it for years the community has stated it for years we would love to be able to buy these items individually but they threw them all into one giant package for 32 dollars that's the price of like um, of a double A game right there. You know, I, I, do you think this is worth Helldivers? I don't know, but uh, I mean, 
But this armor set, again, looks really cool. I think a lot of the stuff that's in here is amazing content. But the problem is, is that it's tied behind a massive paywall when it comes to customization. I mean, this is this rivals Call of Duty when it comes to just prices. I mean, like, look at that DMR, man. I want this. I would love to pay like $5 for that, 500 credits for that. I absolutely would pay that. But sadly, that's not the case right now because it's all tied behind a $32 bundle. And then you have some awesome coatings as well, uh, which do look sweet. You have this uh, uh, spawn effect as well, which I think looks pretty cool. But again, all this armor looks amazing. All the effects, the weapon models, it's all fantastic stuff. And I want to praise Three for Three for doing that because this looks amazing. But the problem is, is that it's way too expensive, dude. I'm not dropping this kind of money on uh, armor customization within Halo Infinite. So that's effectively what you'll be jumping into with Halo Infinite with this Banish Honored update. Again, I think it's kind of more just like a little bit of a shop update, a little bit more of some more customization options given the players, especially with the exchange here. Some quality of life when it comes to the King of the Hill options. Again, but they are uh, like the content you can actually jump in and play is still the same as it was last week as that came in last week, relatively new, which I find a bit odd on the timing there just really because like why wouldn't you wait to release like a map like Corrosion 24-7 into Halo Infinite and just wait a week and then have it jump into the Banished Honor thing. But I believe that's just probably because they promised the map Corrosion to be added into Halo Infinite during the Yappany and they waited till like the last possible week to do that. I don't know, I feel like it's really nice to have something new to play within Halo Infinite whenever a new update like this drops. I mean, we did get BTB Heavies uh, refresh coming in, so when that does get rotated into the big team battle play hopper, then we'll have a chance to play that and see how it all is. So the change to the Operation Pass, which I appreciate, and I think it's better to me. Ultimately, it's rather negligible because the stuff I really only cared about were the armor sets that you can get right here, right? And they are all in the same spots you would typically start unlocking these items as well. So they're pretty much pushing you more into the exchange rather than anything else. And of course, we'll talk about the exchange as well. Overall, that it's a really good idea. I'm glad it's an option for people to jump in to play and grind content give you that carrot at the end of the stick but i think the pricing of these different items is a little too severe for what the grind time is required and as always when it comes to anything involving the shop i just wish there was a way to get these items individually but i'm just fully giving up hope on ever seeing that ever happen with this game and can i have a mini rant with you guys here on this one i feel like this is not important but also would just make sense for it to be a possibility right is this rare, the needle mind array. I believe this is tied to like a shop item or something a long time ago with Halo Infinite. I can't remember, man. So this is a reference to Cat, right? Being shot in the head by a needle rifle in Halo Reach, right? This is not available for the Cat armor set that's in the game. It's only available for the Mark VII. As you can see, when I jump into my Mark VII armor set here, click on the helmet, go to the helmet right here and say attachments, you see the Cat attachment right there, which I think it's hilarious. I love that reference. It's a really fun customization. But when you jump over to the Mark V V armor set here, right? And I have like my air assault helmet, which is the one that Cat uses. And you click on that for attachments. It's not there. And I would just love to have a more uh, lore accurate version of Cat, but it's just not there, sadly. And I don't really see why this can't be the case. I mean, the Mark V B helmet and the Mark VII type helmets are all very similar, right? Like, it's not like drastically different, you know, head shape changes right here. And plus, it's just like a rod that goes through the helmet. Like, why not just have that as an option as like a cross core thing, which we got no cross core update with this either. I mean, we had some coatings coming in for cross core, but like, I'm looking for more like, customization actual thing you can customize with the game if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to tap like and subscribe and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out